Hallelujah. Now today, I speak to you both as your father. And then want to also encourage you to be a bringer of blessing. A transmission. A person that brings blessings to the next person. Genesis 27 verse 37 says, Isaac said to Esau, I have made Jacob your master and have declared that all his brothers will be his servants. I have guaranteed him an abundance of grain and wine. What is left for me to give to you, my son? This morning, I came to make you a master wherever God has planted you. I came to guarantee you food. Food would no longer be a problem for you. You will consistently have an abundance of grain in the name of Jesus. Now understand that Isaac was blessed. He had some generational transfer from his father. So he understood what this meant. So he too wanted to bless his son Esau. He liked meat and his son was a hunter. So he went, you know, he fell in love with Esau and wanted to try. Of course, Esau was his first son, so that was natural. But like any marriage, you know there are issues. Isaac and his wife were not talking as they ought to. They didn't discuss issues. The wife knew that Jacob was going to get the blessing and didn't seem to have discussed with the husband. Not even at the time when Esau was going to get the blessing, are we told that she went to her husband and said, no, 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 this is what God told me. No, she rather chose to deceive the man. But even in that their deceit, God still came through. Your family is not going to be shortchanged. The plan of God for your children will come to pass. But are you that kind of father? Now, when he found that he was deceived, he said to Esau, I have made Jacob your master. I came to make you a master wherever God has blessed you. If God honored his words, he's going to honor mine this morning. Wherever you have been a servant before, as you show up after now, you will be the master there. And he said, listen, he's going to have such material things around him. That's going to be your portion. Now, he, he was talking to the person he had wanted to bless. He was talking as if he was God. Why would he be that confident? Because, listen, he knew he had something spiritual that he wanted to leave with his son. And I've always prayed for every man around me. May you live your life in such a way that you have something to transfer to your children. Why did that prophet follow the... He, he said he cast his mantle on him. He didn't say anything and the young man folded his business and followed him. Why did he follow the prophet? Because he said he wanted a double portion of his anointing. And he followed him everywhere. That prophet got confused like... I get confused sometimes. You know, when you get confused and you don't know what to do, you don't want to carry other people along. And he said to him, stay here. He said, stay where? Except you die or God dies. Wherever you go, I'm going to follow you. And then they crossed the river. That, that second assistant prophet was not from Okorete town. If he was from Okorete town and you see somebody divide river, Hmm. there's water on this side water on this side would you have crossed you would think that this old man wants to commit suicide my own life has not started the other day it was Apostle Zili Agri was telling us how they flew with that you man to Cameroon they got received by president they got very high profile reception the preach at the crusade and the man said he's going back he won't stay again till the day of the flight there's no flight out how will we go he said by boat and you know that this apostle comes from Bielsa. Bielsa, the whole state is river. That's where they should have called river state. But he said as they were wearing their life jacket, they was thinking, 
Why does this man want to die and carry me along? <laughs> oh, but this, this assistant prophet followed him and crossed the river. And now he was alone. Because he had received what he was going after. May people follow you to get something. May you have something that will make people stick with you. He wasn't praying. He was just talking to himself. He said, where is the Lord God of Elijah? Did God answer him? I can't hear you. I like it when I listen to my brother intercessors. When they pray like this, I ask them, how did you learn this prayer? They teach you in Bible school. They pray all kinds of prayer. The things that they are committed to the son, they all kinds of prayer. I just like to talk to God like my father. Sometimes I will ask him, I say, God, did you call me? Did you call me? You see that building? You haven't put any money there. The school will start this September because this next Sunday we are going to commission the, we are going to inaugurate the committee that will plan for curriculum and all those things. We've been waiting for that slab too long. And then you are wondering, sometimes they will ask, Mr. Kafi, I will say, people are hearing you. I say, you are listening to what I'm telling God. Do I know what he will do to you? But I advise the men of this church, if you want to pray about your wife to God, go to the next room and lock the door. Say, Father, this village girl that I brought from Idoro wants to rule over me. Come down and deliver your son. If you don't come down now, I'm going to go up. Hmm. Jesus, I'm the one calling you. If you want to complain about your husband to God, don't pray in the same room. You may not be as wise as my friend who I consider one of the wisest men in this city. Early morning, his wife is a great person of prayer. She is crying and groaning. I know that your own. I know what you would have done. You would have woken up and said, you have started that your nonsense again. When my brother woke up and came by the side of his wife and said, oh God, whatever is making my wife cry, answer quickly. Answer now. Don't pray the prayer that your spouse will answer on behalf of God. May God give you wisdom. So you can declare to your children, you will be the head and not the tail. Above only and never beneath. Now look at the next scripture that I have for you in that your bulletin. Genesis 47 verse 17. But Joseph was upset when he saw that his father placed his right hand on Ephraim's head. So Joseph lifted it up, lifted it to move it from Ephraim's head to Manasseh's head. No, my father, he said, this one is the firstborn. Put your right hand on his head. But his father refused. I know, my son, I know, he replied. Manasseh also, Manasseh will also become a great people. But his younger brother will become even greater. And his descendants will become a multitude of nations. So Jacob blessed the boys that day with this blessing. The people of Israel will use your names when they give a blessing. They will say, may God make you as prosperous as Ephraim and Manasseh. The people of this town will use you as a blessing. When they need a job, they will say, may God bless you with the job, the kind of job that God gave so and so. Three generations of these men. Jacob experienced it from his father and now he is dying and his son brings his two. I want to pray for every family here. In this generation, this blessing will not go to one person. It will be multiplied. That generational transfer will not go to any one person. We multiply it in the name of Jesus. The boys came as Manasseh and Ephraim. They went back as Ephraim and Manasseh. The man said to his son, No, 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 don't worry about your first son. I tried it with Esau. It didn't work. He too tried to, to give the blessing to Esau. No, no, no. May you find out who in your family God has a mark for that blessing. And now Jacob put Ephraim ahead of Manasseh. But he said, don't worry. Manasseh also will be what? Great. 
he too will be a great. Now, Joseph, these boys were blessed before their uncles were blessed. These boys leveled up with your uncles. Your children are going to become outstanding. Now, but you see, these boys were not involved in their future. These were parental assignments. What will your children become tomorrow? It's in your mouth. What are you speaking about them? What do you tell them? What prayers do you offer on their behalf? A friend of mine said, why do you call your son Uzi? I said, it's his name. That's a short form. He said, pastor, it's only scripture that you know. Don't you know that? They said there's a new Israeli gun called Uzi. Is that so? I said, ah, that's good. Because that's the summary of his name. The full name is Uzi Akon. He said, what does that mean? I said, it means worship. He might not have a biological brother. So he, he is, an, when he is coming, that's an army that's coming. So what if you call one single gun Uzi and then complete his name? This is an armada that is coming. In their days, Boko Haram will be in hiding. We are not the ones run. They will be the ones in their generation. They will be the ones looking for these bandits. Where are they? Because the Bible says that everybody will be against them. That's what we are not doing. They will be against us and we will be what? Against them. Now we have not reached that part yet. But there is an army coming that is going to rise against them. So understand that as a father, you have a great responsibility. Like I told you as we we're looking at this Pentecost, if you are not experiencing the power of God in your life, that's because you are nothing doing. You are nothing doing. If you are involved with anything meaningful that is beyond human power, you will need God. And you will give time. You will give attention. You will concentrate how to get favor from God. Then you will, you will settle that quarrel with your spouse. You, you, you will give up that bottle of kerosene that you go to drink every Wednesday. And you will be in church to be disciple. Say, so, pastor, you don't understand. No, it's you that doesn't understand. Don't raise children that will move you out of your main house. You have not yet died. They move you to the boys' quarters and rent the house to other people. But raise children that at the, towards the evening of your life, when you have headache, they will send you an hair ambulance. Not at their personal cost. Joseph did not send wagons by himself from Egypt. They were Egyptian wagons. When his family came, he didn't put them in a guest house. He gave them a section of the town. I came to announce to you that your children are going to become great. Your children will relocate your entire community. Not just you. The community will be relocated by your sons. But that will happen because you are making an investment in their life. That's why his father gave him a coat of many colors. When children get rewards, they, they, they acknowledge their mothers, they acknowledge their fathers. They may, people may not know what you are doing. You drive that boy, that girl, to that music school every day. And then suddenly, he's getting a music award. He can't forget who taught me all that. This is the time for you to invest in that child. This is the time for you to sit with him and tell him things. May the Lord help us. You need to be prophetic. You need to hear from God. The example we have is that Joseph, the husband of Mary, you know, that night, Matthew 2, 13, after the wise men were with him, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up! Flee to Egypt with the child and his mother. The angel said, stay there until I tell you to return because Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. That night, Joseph left for Egypt with the child and the mother. That night, when did you last hear God and what did you do? If you have not reached where you can personally hear God, your Christianity hasn't started. And I keep telling you, this church is not to hear for you. We are raising you to hear from God. 
were raising you that when you sit in that place, you'll be able to say, no, this is not what you are saying. Your Excellency, we pray for you. You will hear what ordinary people cannot hear. You will see what ordinary people cannot see. You will, you will, you will listen to people and you will hear something else. You will manifest wisdom. The many-sided wisdom of God that will shock humanity. That's where God is taking up to. We're not here to compete with human beings. We are here to frighten the devil. Satan will be wondering, we don't know what he's going to do today. Because the enemy cannot comprehend. That's why I have no business with Satan. Uh, those of you who are still going to for a camp, our church, we not man, not come. And now, you know, I'm to come. This is not You know, I come, get 50,000. Am I increased from 30? May God forgive you. Because we pray for you for free. <laughs> we don't collect money. It doesn't look like it is. Oh, may God forgive you. Where was I? Where did we go last night? This is me and Takro. So I was asking them. Boy, you go for a camp, Takro. The people say, yes, okay, that is in Takron, boy. I thought that thing was a joke. Listen, God is on your side. That's why I'm excited about God. If God is on your side, no devil in hell can stop you. So when you look at that's your boy, the, the world may not give him a chance, but you can look at him and say, hey, you are the leader of your class. The hand of God is upon you for good. In your time, you listen. Nobody will win election in the town where you live without talking to you. And you will be amazed how that boy will turn out. Don't 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 use your son or your daughter to become what you could not become. You wanted to be a lawyer, you did not pass jam. Now you want to force them to read law because you have many enemies. You need a lawyer in the family. May God forgive you. Or he must be a doctor. Or he must be an engineer. My daughter told me she wants to go to Oxford. I said to my dear, Oxford, do you know how much the school fees is? 13 million, one semester. That's an annual, this and a whole lifetime service. I said, don't worry, don't think about it. She said, she said to me, daddy, no, no, no. My friend and I were thinking of Oxford. I said, that's good. It's a good ambition to have. But I said to her, we are not in a competition. You don't have to go to... He said, what if I... I would try and be first. I said, even if you are zero. <laughs> you are still our pride. You are our joy. It doesn't matter the position you take. You are precious to us. We are not in competition with anybody. Don't put your child under pressure. My brother who lived with me was going to school. And I sat with him. I said, this room will be open. If it doesn't work where you are going to, you can always come back. That big man you have been struggling for, it has started. This is your money for the month. Two weeks after, he sent me an account. I said, bros, the month has not finished. If your money has finished, you will wait till day. And by the way, the money is your own, so keep your account to yourself. You are now an instant big man. That time, you, you know, rich big man, you try to be So you are now on your own. Any problem? He said, no, you just try. I said, get started. Get started. One of my nephews who went to the bank, he was under age, so we opened an aside account for him. We put money for him to register and get to school. And as I was leaving him at the bank, he came, ran after me and said, Uncle, transport money. I said, to where? All that money is your own. He said, ah, I didn't even think about that. It's true. The money is my own. He could not, listen, God is about to do an amazing thing in your life. But understand that God wants to use you you can't pay exam for your child and be telling the boy, uh, May God forgive your mouth. The other day I was the friend of mine with a reverend father and I was asking him for holy water. He said, what do you want to do? I said, I want this man to wash his mouth because of the things he's saying. He said, you are very troublesome. I said, if I'm not troublesome, will you change this your sheet? <laughs> Give me the holy water if it's holy. Because, listen, you can't use your mouth to say wrong things about your family. My wife wants to kill me. No, that's not in our Bible. My wife is my greatest help after the Holy Ghost. There are only two helps available to us. The Spirit of God and your spouse. So when you begin to think that your wife wants to kill you, I know you belong to Satan. You are reading his Bible. 
That is opposite of scripture. Think the way God thinks about you. Say the things God is saying about you. You say, Pastor, but I don't look like it. That's why you need to develop spiritual muscles. You don't need to be a prophet to raise an outstanding family. That verse I always read when you dedicate a baby. He said, the seed of the righteous shall be mighty on the earth. And I like the New Living Translation. It says, praise the Lord. How joyful are those who fear the Lord and delight in obeying. Not just people who come to church on Sunday morning. No. People who obey his commandments. I'd like to announce to you again. This is not a Sunday, Sunday club. Your life must align with scripture. You need to honor God in your life. The way you live, the things you say, your practices. You need to be able to walk away from whatever things will not honor God in your life. And those who fear the Lord and delight in obeying his commands, I like the next verse, say their children will be what? In how many places? My children in Okorete town will be successful. In America, they will be what? In Uyo, they will be what? Wherever they are. I like this. An entire generation of godly people will be what? Not one person will fail to find a blessing. So I want to charge every man that is here this morning. It's your time to bless your family. Take the next one month. Take the next year. Make it your lifestyle. When you think about that, your baby, what do you think? What pictures come to your mind? And it's, it doesn't have to be only your biological children. I have children on, on, on where's uh, Regina? We met after the first service. Okay, she was there. We did pictures because I'm a father. There are other children in the congregation I father. Arranging to have lunch with a few after now. Part of my fatherhood responsibility to them. One of them broke my heart after the first service. Because that woman has been struggling and she came after that word came and she was in tears. And she kept saying, Pastor, I am strong. I am strong. I only feel about this father thing. I said, no, you are doing well. She herself never really experienced the love of a father. Now her boy doesn't have a father. I bring that kind of situation to an end in the name of Jesus. That's why we bend over backwards to do some things. I've been fathering one child who came to us from about 16. Now he's 34. Can you imagine he was the biggest person in that family and he was looking after his siblings. So you got to talk to him about school. He doesn't, I don't just, we don't just preach to him. We, we come here, rise on your feet this morning. Let's, let's talk to God about ourselves. Lord, make me a blessing to my family. Pray for every father around you. If your father didn't do anything meaningful for you, it is time to talk to God. Lord, show up for me. But what your father couldn't do for you, that's what we are going to do today. Talk to God. Talk to God.